Discussion Podcast. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. I just want to say, love hurts. Yeah, but what's love got to do? It's got to do with, baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. Uh, I, I, I can't follow through that. <laughs> but anywho, in today's episode, we are going to review the 75th issue of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. In this issue, or in this story, the main six quest for the fallen star of a missing constellation puts them on a collision course with their most galactic adversary yet. So, Silver, before we head into the reviews, first impressions are in order, and what do you think? Well, this is one where I enjoy it for sort of vignettes, but the overall story begins to feel repetitive. There's sort of there's a, a steady repetition of events when you break it down into into basic components. And after all, like, okay, how's this how are they gonna dig themselves out of this here thing of a jig? And so by the end, there's a, there'll be plenty to say about char- a character, there'll be plenty to say about the conflict, and the unfortunate role the princesses are once again forced into. I mean, that is a caveat for them now. It's unfortunate. But all in all, I do enjoy this story, and the villain is quite fascinating to talk about. Oh, true, true. And um, for me here, this comic or this story here is... Hmm. I, I kind of like it, but at the same time, too, I don't. It's, I, I'm 50-50 with this. I feel like the villain here is a bit too mean-spirited. She's, I guess she's one of the factor of her personality and character traits. That's why I don't like it in terms of story. But uh, I, I guess we just have to jump in. Yes, yes we shall. So if you guys at home have not read this yet, pause sure and go do so. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed the comic. And well, uh, since this is a four-part comic, we're going to take things differently. Um, I, I think we're going to break down the themes and highlight some of the points of this comic. And we'll just talk about it in general. In general. Sounds good to me. All right. So we start off the comic with a quick history of Equestria? Like, we, it's setting up the story and villains. So we get to see what um, all of the heroes or um, what this is what 2000 plus years ago and so on. Um, the heroes don themselves in armor and we get to see what Princess Celestia, Luna, Queen Novo, uh, the Deer King or yeah, the Deer King and the Abyssinian King, the Cat King. Yes, I don't know the cat king, but uh, the king of the deers is uh, King Espen. Ah. So apparently immortality, or at least longevity, is a part of the job description. That's one hell of a healthcare plan. Oh, it looks like it, yes. So we, we get to see the leaders um, defending the land from, well, <laughs> the villain here is quote-unquote Discord. But it's revealed that no, it's not him. It's something much worse than that. And well, uh, by the six of them, including Discord, uh, combine their powers to stop and banish the bad guy away. So here's the setup where we get to see the heroes deal with the villain. And the villain here is infatuated here with Discord. And this villain's brand of chaos is much more terrifying. Uh, you're going to see this throughout the entire story. I think people sometimes forget Andy Price does really wonderful cartoon exaggerations and styles. Mm-hmm. He's my favorite artist for, uh, for the MLP comics. But he also does horror. Yeah, like people forget about that part of him. But he comes from a horror background, like what I think some of his earlier works is mostly based around uh, horror comics. Yep. I don't know his full catalog, but it's quite uh, 
what the way he depicts this chaos, it's literally trying to eat you. Discord, his brand of chaos is like a, a play uh, a playpen. He wants everyone in there uh, just enjoying this marvelous chaos he's put together. But he himself is also subject to it. Like uh, in Keep Calm and Flutter On, he he makes squirrels hyper aggressive. <laughs> One tries to bite him. And he's cross at it for doing so, but it's not like he's saying I'm exempt from my own chaos. This one, though, uh, this new threat, it's the chaos is not just there for you to enjoy or put down. It is assaulting you. And that makes it way more threatening. Yeah, and that's very bad, like. Um, I, I think this is why one of the reasons that I do not like this new villain because uh, how would I put this to me the villain is too powerful like the villain here is way overpowered that it takes a Deus Ex Machina to kind of solve the problem okay the elements of harmony I don't consider to be Deus Ex they're established to be exceptionally powerful weapons mostly I'm wondering why they uh why they would ever give them up or why how do you not have them disappear so they're not a crutch but then i gotta ask uh let's see here what was the magic they all used there was the elements of harmony okay the heart of the forest but then the the absidian king's eyes does he pass those on to a successor no nah, man he's what he has sight beyond sight Okay, he is not buff enough to be a Thundercat. <laughs> ah, you get the reference. Woo-hoo. How could I not? But then, for all the power around them, uh, Discord just KOs the whole group. Yeah, they're distracted. <laughs> they're distracted. And they're asleep. Yes. He wants to keep the game going, but Discord is just so scared of this other being that he will try to wipe the memory of her away. Yeah. Which is kind of strange, as that's exactly what uh, Shadowlock tried to do. Yeah, but <laughs> uh, who? Yes, that guy who was oh so important in the quote season premiere. Who? <laughs> uh, the guy you... with whom you could ship Twilight. Uh, there's more who to that. Like seriously, he was a waste of ink. <laughs> oh wow, wow, Norman! I'm not used to hearing you offer such scathing critique. But that's the thing, man. Like. I uh, I give it praise where I uh, where it's due, but I will uh critique something when I see it goes bad. And in this case, the shadow dude guy, whatever his name is, a waste of ink because in the end, he goes nowhere and he's non-canon. And in the end, he doesn't even matter. That is true, but that is another conversation for another day. I don't think we'll... Oh, come on. I'm, I'm experiencing Norman's dark side. Let the bitterness flow through you. Uh, but... Ah, <laughs> I'll be in a disappointing trilogy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, your clones. Clones of your clones of your clones. But anywho, carrying on. Um, yes, we, we, we get a setup. We, we get the setup of, okay, this bad guy is huge and bad. So what you do, you get her back into the game after a few centuries. And I'm going to presume that this is, what, 3,000 years into the future? Earlier you said uh, 2,000. Uh, I'm, I'm just guessing because... Uh, see, Pony pony timeline is just dumb. <laughs> Everything happened a 1,000 years ago. It was a very interesting week. Yeah. yeah. But overall, we, we get to see the setup. We, now, here comes the part where we need to get an adventure. And... The part here, it's interesting where um, we are introduced to the MacGuffin that uh, brings back the villain. And by the way, villain name is Cosmos. That's right. I believe that's a drink. Cosmopolitan? Or is that... Well, there's... I thought that was a magazine. Uh, there's also a drink, if I remember, right? All right, let's, let's do a quick. I'll do a quick search while you carry on. All right, uh, I'm I'm trying. To, <laughs> I'm I'm noticing that I'm going scene by scene, but I'm trying to resist that. So anyway, um, Rarity finds this necklace, and it looks great on Twilight. Unfortunately for the heroes, 
Sid necklace is the MacGuffin that brings back Cosmos. So the necklace talks to her and we get to see the setup of Okay guys, this is the adventure. I want you to go to uh certain locations on the map to find out or uh, to gather this six gem to unlock a really really uh long what you call this mm, hidden constellation and stuff. So head at D. So Twilight gathers the people, put them in group and just sends them off. So what do you think about the setup, man? Well, it's certainly interesting. I mean, you could say, oh, no, don't do it, don't do it. Also, I appreciate uh, Andy Price's map of the stars. Uh, let's see, what do we got? Caprica, Margarita, Altair 4, Kizin, Mongo, Praxis. Basically, all these are, oh, Wolf 359, <laughs> Star Trek fans. <laughs> uh, this QQ Nos. So basically, any sci- sci-fi fans will have a field day either looking up the meaning of these words or recognizing their favorite franchise. So that's just part of why I like Price as an artist. He goes the extra mile in terms of putting things together. But here's the thing. This is where we're about to get into the repetition of this story. Twilight is under the influence of this magical item. So the But basically, the cast go, hijinks ensue, we get a flashback of Discord and Cosmos, and then, and then, there's a fight, which our heroes lose. And then we reset. And again, so for a little while, until the build-up to Cosmos' grand return, it's eh, it's a bit of the same dance each time. Yeah, and I, I think that's what turned me off to the comic, because it felt repetitive. Also that a lot of this is Cosmos... Not okay, she's manipulating Twilight, but the only reason she got control of Twilight is mere circumstance. Yeah, I mean, it's just dumb luck. Like, it's dumb luck that Rarity found the necklace at a store, and it's just dumb luck that she wanted to share it with Twilight. And so, basically, it feels like there's a lot of Cosmos is powerful, but a lot of her victories seem unearned. They happen for her, and then her power level is just so grand that uh, that there's really no contest. The fight is destined to fail. Yeah, and I think that's why I dislike it, because the villain here is overpowered, and you kind of need something to handicap them. Well, and there is, but it's not revealed until the very end. Cosmos does not run into barrier besides her own patience uh until until the very end mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but uh book one is mostly the setup for the crew like um twilight here is just sending them off to locations and whatnot uh what i if i remember right Re- twilight sorry uh, rainbow dash and uh who was it again rainbow dash and rarity no no, Rarity... Is it Rarity? I thought Rarity was the Crystal Empire with Rainbow Dash. Yeah, yeah, it's them. So, uh, Rainbow Dash is with Rarity, heading off to the Crystal Empire with Spike. Uh, Pinkie Pie is with Big Max. They send them to Clonk Town, was it? Uh, Clunk Town. Yeah, Clunk Town. Applejack is with Twilight, heading off to the Cantalot Libraries. And then we get to see Zakura and the CMC is heading to Griffinstone. So, yeah, th- 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 this is the setup that we're given. And th- I-, I would say that the CMC and Zakura is a very interesting pick. Which, what I find funny is that this is only available in hindsight. Twilight is doing the same thing now with the current stories. Sending teams of her friends off into the world to accomplish a goal. Except this time, she's not uh, possessed by an Eldritch Horror. <laughs> so, that's progress. Yay. But one of the few things that I enjoy in one of the panels is um, Twilight and Applejack going to the Candle Library in a secret passage. Applejack questions, are we not going to meet up with Princess Celestia and tell her about this stuff? And Twilight just says no. Well, 
Twilight says no. Twilight, quote, quote. Yeah. But if you take a look see at the background, there's a plethora of awesomeness. Like, you can see oh. Lionel's sword there. Which means that Celestia apparently conquered the Thundercats. What? And also there's a car. She won't allow diesel fuel to enter the world. <laughs> but yeah, um, Applejack discovered that, hey, that you ain't, you ain't Twilight, but... Um, yeah, it gets beaten up, and yeah, it, it's it's a, it's a really good setup. Now, this is a setup where um, we are introduced to the threat and what the threat can do via Discord. So Fluttershy meets up with Discord, and Discord, uh, Fluttershy tells Discord that, yo, we're going to an adventure to look for Star Diamond Gems. And Discord is afraid of what's going to happen poof them away to his dimension wrap Protoshai in bubble wrap and he explains the story to Fluttershy and and it's like you mentioned before it's repetitive we kind of know it but yeah let's just continue on with the analysis I, I don't know my Maybe the question now is of the of all these various uh quests, which one was your favorite? Uh let's see. Oh man. I, I, I there's two that I enjoy. And I think that's in book two. Uh it's the Pinkie Pie Big Mac combo and also CMC and Sakura combo. That's in book two. And that's for the <laughs> it's just for the sure fact that um, I, I'm guessing we just move on to book two then. Uh, just for the sheer sure fact that Big Mac is the one that's going, that's willing to bend his moral just not to participate in some sport game. <laughs> and I, I love the fact that Big Mac was planning just to steal what he needed. Yeah, and like, like, and we meet those honest apples. Yeah, we 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 meet Kepper by the way, and Kepper she just says. You were about to suggest how to steal it, weren't you? <laughs> yep. Oh boy, yeah. But yeah, um, sports montage is sports montage. They won, but it got stolen again. Like it happens every year. <laughs> and Cap would be all like, "What? You didn't think I was gonna steal it?" Yeah, it's a sports for me. Like th- that's what I enjoy. And the other is um, Griffinstone. They found the thing quite easily, and somehow this is bad juju. Like even the Griffins don't want this crap. Like yo, we want it. Go take it, take it, take it. We don't care. And here's the thing: Griffins are not known for their generosity, at least in Equestria or anywhere. Mm-hmm. Like them willing to let it go. Mm. And we we see a sign of bad luck here, where. Zakura noticed the thing and he she she's attracted to it via power and she knows that oh bad this is bad juju. Like I have a bad feeling about this. Famous last words. And then they are defeated by the power of mushy stuff. Probably. But now they mushy. have to, now they have to go back to Cantalot. And I just like how um Apple Bloom is the one that is willing to go name drop, just not to walk home. She doesn't want to ride in style. Yeah, it's like, hey, I'm friends with Princess Twilight. Want to give us a lift? <laughs> Man, the apples are really bending their moral code. Well, hey, you you can't really be a diverse character unless you're tempted to break your code every now and again. Mm, true. And... A, any, a character who never wavers is either a fanatic or a cliche. It is true. But um, one of the few things that we notice here is that, okay, the princesses are getting taken over or are being taken over by Cosmos one by one. Now we have three princesses of Equestria. And we get to see that, hey, um, the bad, uh, the good guys here are not that dumb. They're, they know what they're doing. Uh, Kepper decides to do a quick one, a quick over to Princess Celestia. But now, um, Celestia notices it and catches the ponies. We we get to see a nice, awesome fight, but it's short-lived because 
Well, they're fighting almost a demigod. And we get to see a kiss. Yay. Yeah, defeated by mushy stuff. Although Sugar Bell. Don't anybody tell Sugar Bell. Uh, it's okay. Wow, Big Mac sure has the hearts for uh, Luna. Well, considering this is like the second time she's kissed him in this comic series. The first one was on the cheek, right? Well, first on the cheek. And then, and now how are they going <laughs> to, I wonder if they'd ever have Luna meet him again. It's like, oh, you're married now? <sighs> All the good ones are taken. No, man. There's the herding system. I'm not sure I like the sound of that. Uh, he works for horses, man. Uh, I don't remember. I don't know if horses mate for life. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to carry on with that train of thought. Let's move on. So, anywho, the good guys are captured, sent to the dungeon with Applejack. And now we get to see that, yay, um, the stars are placed on the bad, uh, sorry, our good guys here. And yes, Cosmo is almost revealed. Like, she is almost back. Unfortunately, reveal, she already had a reveal, which might be part of the problem. You know, it, it's sort of like, oh, the monster is coming. That's the grand excitement. But through the flashbacks, we already see her. And as a, and in fact, we see her on a lot of the covers. Without that mystique, I think Cosmos becomes a bit less, both, both less intimidating, but also less appealing. Yeah, and I think it's what, one of those scenarios where uh, it's best that if you don't reveal her at all like show uh, silhouettes of her instead like aliens like the first alien movie the bad guy didn't really reveal themselves till near the very end yeah you just see the rec the most recognizable and primal thing a mouth but anywho we start off issue 15 77 or book number 3 with Discord in his Dimension Gardening. And we, we get to see a different side of Discord and we get to see a few bit of explanation about how Discord was back in the days. Like you mentioned before, Discord was just a nuisance. Like he was just there to, you know, make some trouble for the ponies. Like, um... Forgetting to put on your pants going outside. Ha 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 ha. But we, we, we are introduced to Cosmo. And it's a bit story where, okay, uh, go, <laughs> a lot of chaos meets uh, Cosmos. They fall in love and stuff. And yeah, this got smitten. And yeah, th there, there's a lot of awesome things in the background. Because if you take a look, see, um, there's a map. And the map is about of Wonderland. The done creating chaos there. The other was six one six. Six one six. Do you know what universe is that? I'm trying. I feel like there's a DC universe. No, it's Marvel. Oh, at least I was in the ballpark of comics. The other one is the DC universe. Played out six one six. Yep. Yep, and then like oh, but. Sorry? But then, then they get DC with all the pri with all the multiverse, and that's just too confusing for even <laughs> chaos spirits. Yep. Uh, and then um, Discord is uh, Discord introduce um, chaos cosmos to Equestria and so on. And here's something fascinating: we get to see that okay, each uh, sorry Discord here lives in his own little universe or world, and he can travel from universe to universe and well he's not part of equestria really i mean he's just a uh, part of his own world where he can go anywhere just to do stuff which is fascinating he can go just about anywhere yeah but he he keeps coming back to equestria even before he was friends with fluttershy because probably i think it's because equestria is one of the few places that could actually resist him yeah, well, he just find it funny because, well, his brand of what, humor or brand of uh, chaos is just inconvenience. Or troll. Yeah. Lots of trolling. We get a brief explanation about how 
equestrian works. Like, K Cosmos here wants to go further, but Discord tells her that, nah, there's care, there's what, there are keepers, caretakers of this universe where they protect the ponies and life here. And Cosmos doesn't like that. She wants to conquer it. And we, we get back to the, what you call this, um, flashback from issue one, where, yeah, it's repetitive here, where we get to see them fight again and whatnot. And yeah, the the story goes on and on. Uh, finally, we get to see Rainbow Dash and Fluttish Story Rarity uh, head to the Crystal Empire and find their own thing. And Princess Cadence is affected by the gem. And yeah, she's now turned. Oh, by the way, there's also this part where um, we are introduced to Spike's explanation about how gems taste like and whatnot. Anything to add, Silver? Uh, not a whole lot. I mean, we'll we'll lead into it. I do find it, it, I think they timed this exactly so that uh, Cadence would be the last one. Because uh, Cosmos has been flirting with Discord through each of the princesses. Kind of awkward to do that with a married princess. But she is the princess of love. Yes, but that doesn't mean that she want, that she was falling in love with everyone around her every five minutes. That's what you think. Well, now, don't tell that to Shining Armor. Oh, Shining Armor part of it, too. Fidelity? What that? Nah, man. It's hurting. <laughs> Again with the hurting. You don't want to talk about the hurting, but then you bring up the hurting. It's hurting. You might call this deep hurting. <laughs> it's hurting me. <laughs> oh, boy. It's hurting me on the inside. Yeah. So, anywho, um, Discord here explains that, okay, I do the things that I do because I find it fun and entertaining, but because of Cosmos... I had to kind of take the blame for all of this. And because of that, uh, the ponies are afraid and blame me. And the thing is, Discord considers Celestia and Luna to be his friends. It's a rather abusive friendship then. I mean, he he did basically make their lives harder. He didn't, he didn't know what a friend was. I, if anything, I view it more as the Joker and his infatuation with Batman. It's like, my life is more fun because of you, my rival. That's why he keeps coming back. Yeah. And the thing is, he yeah, he, he cares for them. But here's, here's another part. Okay, let's talk about this. Discord. What do you think? Like, did they retcon him or did they add more lore? I think it's add more lore. But, rem but we're also hearing this from Discord's perspective. And he's an unreliable narrator. He claims that, oh, it was all Cosmos, that, that he never really went along with it. He might have enjoyed it more than he was willing to admit. And that basically he's trying to paint himself as the hero victim, sac sacrificing his sterling reputation to take the fall for Cosmos and keep her safe. Or no, keep her safely tucked away and out of the public mind. I don't, but I think Discord doesn't remember things quite right. He is definitely interpreting history to to benefit himself. Probably, but one of the few things that Discord mentioned that he likes chaos, but he doesn't like seeing ponies get hurt because of it. Um, Cosmos uh, turn in orphanage, <laughs> pile up the sad violin, why don't you? Uh, turn it into a throne and let the ponies inside it burn and die. Discord doesn't like that. Like, killing is not one of the things that Discord wants. And uh, it takes them out of the game. Yeah. And Cosmos is pissed. Now, back to the present day. Fluttershy wants to go back to the throne room to save her friends. And Discord doesn't want to. But Fluttershy talks him down and explains that you're ready for this. Like, let's go. And once they 
to arrive to the throne room, um, let's just say that, yeah, um, the situation has gotten worse, really worse. Well, the funny thing is, uh, wait, is this, the, is this when they go to the throne room in the first issue? This is the... Nah, I, I'm moving on to book three. Well, we never really covered the the defeat of Discord and Fluttershy. Fluttershy got turned into an actual Flutter pony. <laughs> Yay. And I don't know why. One of the confusing things about this is what... Cosmos will, like, turn Capper into an actual cat. Not an anthro cat, a literal cat. Mm -hmm. And she'll turn Fluttershy into a butterfly pony hybrid. And I'm like, well, does does like does that butterfly feature a reduced lifespan? Is she expecting Fluttershy to keel over in a day? Uh, what what's the what's the modus operandi here? Uh. And as, they never really go into it. It's just sometimes Cosmos does something just to do it. Yeah, that could be one of the mo, but I don't know because it's Fluttershy rhymes with butterfly, so why not, right? The cosmos has a rather limited imagination. Eh. For all the cosmos she, for all the uh, chaos she indu induces, uh, she really doesn't know how to dream up something innovative. <laughs> uh, we we'll see why the reason later. But um, getting back to book three, yeah. Um, so the the whole crew heads back to the rest and try to save the world. And yeah, we, we get to see Cadence here already being affected by the gem. And we see Cosmos escaping. But Cosmos mentioned something about she can even do better. And she absorbed all of the ponies, revealing herself to be a big giant monster. Now, let's see here. The bigger Cosmos... Yeah, she's uh now she's all the parts of our ponies, which is pretty freaky to see. And very, very awesome looking because in terms of scary things, yeah, this is scary. <laughs> the imagery in issue four the fourth part is even scarier. Fourth part? Well, the final issue I should say. It's kind of, it's hard to talk about this because the first issue is a double size. Therefore it's really two parts. So this is a five part series in four issues. It's kind of like talking Star Wars and trying to talk uh, trilogies. Oh, I like the first trilogy. Oh, the the one where Anakin falls. No, that's the th second trilogy. <laughs> but but I thought the second trilogy was Luke and his adventures. Oh, that's the original trilogy. <laughs> oh boy, Star Wars is confusing. <laughs> well, at least they didn't. At least Cosmos and Discord didn't try to go there. Uh, but yeah, we, we see that yeah, Discord comes in at a really bad time. And yeah, moving on to book four. So this one here uh, is a bit, uh, how do I put this? Mm, we, we get a story from Cosmo's point of view where, okay, she's trapped in space via Princess Celestia sending her there and keeping her there. And she everybody keeping her there. Yep. And she noticed that oh, um, Discord is looking at me, waiting for my return. But once she's back, no, nah, this is terrible. This is very terrible. And here, here's the thing: like the montage here or the plan for taking her down. It's one of those things where I feel like this is one. Of, this is another reason why I do not like this issue because basically they're they're building off her original imprisonment but it's installed a fail safe or imposed a limit on her it's not that too i mean here's the thing um you you your powerhouses are gone you don't have any power here like okay you're missing twilight celestia luna cadence all of the four elecons are gone so you're expecting the well the others um Applejack, Rainbow Dash, Rarity, Fluttershy, who has butterfly wings, and Pinkie Pie, and also Discord trying to take her down with the help of the CMC and Spike. Like that there is a terrible plan. 
And the thing is, your your uh, party planner here is going to be Pinkie Pie. And Pinkie Pie's modus operandi here is go in a swinging with no plan. Wait, what? Well, the plan is get the gems off. Well, this plan one. Get, get, go in swinging, take the gems off, and feed them to Spike. Honestly, why Cosmos doesn't go after Spike is he's the linchpin of this. Yeah, that's true. He is the one that kind of took her down. But that's the thing. Like, There's a lot of things in here that make the comic feel a bit draggy. I, and I think the um, speech that Pinky gave was the one that I felt like, uh, no, this is just, no, TLDR. Now, I will say in the fight, seeing what Cosmos does to each pony, funny enough, I was thinking of Piedmon from Digimon. Ooh, why? Because in his final battle with the main characters, he basically brought them all down except for uh, TK, Kari, and Patamon. By turning everyone into keychains. Uh -huh. And it's actually funny how you could make keychains threatening. Because, you know, you're transforming kids against their will and chasing them down. It was surprisingly dark. And so here's Cosmos turning everyone into carousel ponies, into uh, into fish. I'm not sure why fish. Turning Pinky into a, a figurine, just like the llama she's been touting the whole arc. Yeah, but he, uh, uh, a bonus on that... Um, when Cosmos turned Pinky into a figure, it is a brushable, the My Little Pony brand brushable. Yep, yeah, almost every pony product's got to have brushable manes. Yeah, I don't know why. And including the way that the mane is styled <laughs> or tangled, depending yeah. on your perspective. Yep, yep. But yeah, um, the plan is sound. We we get to see the ponies. Uh, what you call this? Uh, get one piece of the gem out and uh, feed it to Spike. So there, there's a moment in here where Fluttershy entrusts Discord to take Cosmos down, and this is what have this, <laughs> and this is what he has been building for for almost three thousand years. And so, so yeah, like you, you can clearly tell that okay, this story here is quote unquote Discord's redemption arc. Well, honestly, his, it, <laughs> I don't know if he's ever truly been redeemed. He's always been a chaos trickster. And boy, at the end of the of Friendship is Magic, we see how much that backfires. Uh, he's, I don't know if he's ever truly redeemed. He's more tempered. True. He, in, in Friendship is Magic, he's always been the one there to kind of, well, play pranks and into chaos, but in a moderate amount. And uh, what now? Like, he, he's, he's, he has good intentions, but does them so wrong. Well, I don't, even, I don't even know if his intentions are good. His intentions are usually, well, either test Twilight or get something for himself. True. Ironically, his most altruistic was in uh, what? Oh darn! What was it? Discordant Harmony, where he was actually thinking about Fluttershy and not taking advantage of her, which was like, wow! No wonder that no wonder everyone thinks Fluttershy wants to marry Discord. <laughs> uh, I, I think they which, did, right? Which she might yet. You know, that's open to fan interpretation. But um. We see an awesome art by Andy Price here where he uh, combined all of the past villains. Uh, we get to see T-Rex, uh, Nightmare Rarity, Nightmare Moon, uh, the Storm King, Queen Chrysalis, Arizoto, and herself. Like, that is an awesome art. Oh, but Arizoto isn't really a villain. He's just misunderstood. Baloney. Yeah. Same so with T-Rex. I mean, did you not see him at the gym? Like, he's trying to work out on his body. He's just a gym rat. Go look at that body. Work out. Yeah. But, um, overall, we get to see that, yeah, um, the fight is just repetitive. 
Uh, we get to see Discord trying to take the last piece and feed it to Spike, which works. And from that point on, uh, Cosmos here demorphs and um, is weakened by the state of affairs. And now we get to see, well, more reference. Discord dressed up as a Ghostbusters and putting Cosmos into the compartment unit and tossing her into space uh, to be exact on the moon. As a Ghostbuster. <laughs> uh, but still, um, I, I guess comics almost over because uh, the day is safe. Cosmos is powerless and in space. And we get to see, well, um, a happy ending. Well, somewhat happy ending. I mean, uh, Twilight, poor Twilight was basically on the sideline for this. She suffered the fate of all princesses in being subdued by the villain to make them a threat. <laughs> yeah. But overall, um, as a comic, okay, Silver, what, what do you think? Like, we, we have been... We haven't been really putting more analysts. We just have been going through at a breakneck speed. But what do you think overall? Uh, well, for starters, like I say, there was a there was a notable rhythm to each issue, and so while there's fun and hijinks, it really doesn't feel like it, it's necessarily building. You realize that each because of the similarities, each one you're just like okay. How about we get to the the climax then? How about we get to the villain truly revealed? Now, it was interesting when Cosmos had declared, I am not a being of chaos, I'm a being of malice. And I thought that made me think about, say, a princess of love, a spirit of chaos and disharmony. Uh, very often, these beings influence the world around them ponies seem to fall in love more easily with cadence around discord brings out the conflict in everyone cosmos would impose her identity her will or identity on those who wore the the uh, stars but she didn't really seem to have an influence on an influence on how others behaved and so it's a little harder to buy that she is the self-declared being of malice when others are not being all that malefic but on top of this, like, um, so Cosmos here is not from the world of Equestria. She's been flung there from another universe. So this does explain where does she or where did she came from? Well, but this also says that Discord is not from Equestria. He too is interdimensional. So that may not be a requirement. Probably. It's one of those things where, but here's the thing. You mentioned that uh, Discord has an AOE where everything around him wants to be chaotic. Well, all I know is he's a, a spirit, like a basically a concept made manifest. It seems to be the way to describe many of uh, the characters, especially ones that are tied very heavily to an emotion. And if you're not born a spirit, you could become a ruler of that theme. Princess of friendship, princess of love. Mm. And it seems that way, but yeah, um, I, I don't know. Is this this comic here? It follows a standard tempo. I I understand why you want to break it down like that. It's just to gradually introduce the characteristic of the villain to the audience. But what I think make this comic start off on the wrong foot is that we get to see how Cosmos looks like before this before her final transformation. Like, the final transformation reveal is just awesome, but we don't really get to see much of Cosmos. Uh, what we do know that she she is... Well, technically, she looks good. She looks asymmetrical. Yeah, she defies harmony, but just by her very form. True. That, unlike Discord, because when you see Discord, he is a mixed smack of multiple creatures but cosmos here she is pretty what you call this symmetrical like everything is balanced yeah. 
That's true. She, she does have more symmetry, which is should have been the first hint that she's not a being of actual chaos. Though, it's interesting, while Discord is a blend of, of uh, creatures, both uh, carnivorous and herbivore, Cosmos is almost entirely predatory traits, especially the cobra... Uh, well, what would you call them? Cobra cowl? Yeah. Rills? No. Hood. Yeah, yeah. That's it. The cobra hood. And a scorpion tail. And then the goat's ra what do you call this? A horn. Like those are well, those those can be used as a weapon. A goat at full charge can kill a person. Yeah, true that. So don't uh don't don't take that for light for granted. It's not baloney. Yeah. But I, I think the reveal of her is a bit too soon. Like we, we, we see her in the end of issue one like we, we get to see her already reveal like uh there's a scene here where twilight is scheming and there's a shadow figure behind twilight in the stars that's awesome that's how you should make it look like if you want to reveal a shape and whatnot most of the book does that but near the very end we get to see oh this is cosmos this is how she looks and now including the cover art reveal like ah oh man th that's just spoiling her there like we should have just kept on guessing how she looks I guess the monster revealed is not as scary as the monster unseen yeah although, <clears throat> although I guess they missed an opportunity for uh, a predator reference you are one ugly mother trotter <laughs> oh boy <clears throat> but yeah um, other than that and mm, I guess like this is the end. My <sighs> January friend. But let's see. Um, with that we get to see well nothing much. Uh, Discord's admiring his medal, so that's good. I don't feel like he doesn't really earn a medal for cleaning the mess he created. Kind of, but the re okay. <laughs> There's a reason to Discord's madness here. The reason why he made everybody else forget about the uh, threat which is Cosmos is because that he doesn't want the ponies to or villains of Equestria to find out there's a super weapon and free Cosmos out which makes sense somehow but isn't it <laughs> isn't information is king he doesn't want anyone to find out information is king. No, uh doesn't want to find out where uh, Cosmos exists. Because if the bad guy knows that Cosmos exists, they can use the information that they get to free Cosmos and use her as a weapon. But free Cosmos, because Cosmos is not a being that works well with others. No. None of the villains in Equestria really work well with others, even the Triad. Uh, true. Yeah, I mean, her, she's, uh, this course logic is sound, but with something like this, oh man, like, you should just keep her away. Because when the star fall back to Equestria, uh, we see countermeasures to make sure that none of the artifacts are gathered in one place. Uh, one falls into the Everfree Forest and Discord buried it there. Uh, the other falls into Candela Castle and Princess Celestia sent that thing into the underground storeroom, never to be seen. But the rest, some use it as a decorative trophy, uh, the other was done by. I mean, that's that lot. I, I I don't remember. But anywho, silver. Uh, anything you want to add? Putting this on a quest daily saw a lot of people raising a big rigmarole about Cosmos and how much they didn't like her. I I, th I think they they shared your frustration, Norman. But I was heartened that when it, uh, Andy Price went to BronyCon, a lot of fans. We're talking about how much they enjoyed Cosmos. And here's the thing. I find the critiques legitimate and fair. So I'm not saying don't criticize Cosmos, but I'm happy when the creative staff receives some positive feedback as well. 
the internet has this way of amplifying the sounds of negativity. Mm. Now, they, t- they took something of a risk coming up with this rather big bad. And now, well, I, as far as I can tell, that big bad is, is gone. I don't foresee her making a return. Especially now that the comics are in season 10 territory. Yeah. So this is probably the last we'll see of Cosmos, unless I'm proven wrong. But I like that the, that the staff, that Price got some positive feedback on Cosmos, because she is frightening, and she is a interesting design but uh it's i think just important in acknowledging what didn't work you also just recognize that people can have fun with it that all the critiques are valid and yet at the same time people can still have fun i think one of the big stigmas about reviewers uh getting very meta here is that somehow by pointing out everything that's wrong the message is somehow you shouldn't enjoy this you're not allowed to like it. It's not objectively good. It depends on reviewers. For us personally, the MBS show crew, we highlight the positives and the negatives and we explain why we don't like them. But if you like something, hey, good on you. Uh, more power to you. And I noticed that we have that dynamic where you don't like something but I do, and vice versa. And that's good. Uh, versatility is always good. And for me personally, with this comic here, Cosmos as a character, she's stupid scary. Like, um, there, there's one page where she's not even full form, but the three princesses already have dependent. And she's just sitting uh, like a cat on the throne you, you get to see her look how she uh, how her misform looks like and you can tell that okay this is not a creature to be uh, dealing with like you want to get away far away as possible from this creature run away run away <laughs> yes um, and on top of that the character looks good in terms of story wise I think that the reveal spoiled the mystery. The mystery. The mystery of the cosmos. Mm-hmm. By the way, I did a search, and yes, a cosmopolitan, often uh, casually referred to as a cosmos. It sounds like a delightful drink, except for the cranberry. I'm not a cranberry fan. Mm-hmm. Too sour. Maybe it's sweet in this one? Well, I mean, there's sweet and lime, which I guess counteracts it. Mm-hmm. I don't drink, so I've got no idea. But, um, yeah, uh, other than that, anything else, Silver? Because there's negatives and positives that you mentioned from fans telling Andy about it. Yeah. Well, I guess just a certain sorrow that there is no follow-up to this, that we'll never likely know more about Cosmos. Uh, it's one of the frustrations with the comics that uh, for all these characters they introduce, like Shadowlock, they never get to stick around or come back. The one set of villains that really made a return was Longhorn and his gang, and they were not good villains. They were just annoying. They were only a threat because Twilight allowed them to be so. <laughs> yeah, I remember that one. That was not fun at all. So, well, anyway, that, that's, my, that's my sour apples for that story. You've got you've got Shadowlock, I've got Longhorn. <laughs> I got you, babe. Yeah. But I I kind of regret we'll never get Cosmos trying a different plan or maybe she'll or maybe seeing how she could spread malice throughout Equestria. Not just imposing danger on others, but bringing out the worst in others. Yeah. But to me, I I feel like one of the few reasons that this character doesn't work for Equestria or for this universe. It's just the way she is. Like, she's willing to off children. So, like, I don't feel she's suited for Equestria. I mean, yes, granted, there are some times where life has been lost and so on, but this is a kid's comic at first. And some of the scary point does play a part here. Yes, that's true. But 
I don't know, man. Like, I think certain part of Cosmos just make me not like her. Maybe it's the mean spirited nature of her. Maybe it's the way that she treats Discord. The abusive nature of her. Maybe I don't like those kind of things. Well, then you won't have to deal with her again. Mm, true. But it will be interesting to see, to see what they do with her in the future, if there's a future for her. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doubtful there is, but one never knows. So, anywho, um, let's hit to the final thoughts. All right. My final thoughts is this is actually better to read in one go rather than in the incremental monthly uh, flow we had. Because after a while, the rep- the repetitive nature of the fi- hijinks, find the star, get beat, Cosmos grows more powerful. It, wo- it wore out its welcome, and I think it's better if you can read through that in one go and then get to the final conflict. Then at least you feel like a sense of momentum. I think that's true, because uh, I remember not liking reading this comic series and I think that it could be that fact that you mentioned there and after doing a rereading of this it was not bad as I remember I find certain part that I enjoy well that's the thing sometimes it's funny that sometimes having the access to a story in its entirety from the get-go rather than piecemeal is the better approach but then you're asking someone to wait four months just to read one story which is true. Like the waiting part there is not the best part. Oh, waiting is the hardest part. Uh, and <laughs> is that also your final thoughts? I think I've covered just about everything else involving it. All right, and as for me, this comic adventure here is a lot of fun to read through. Uh, there's a lot of funny adventure and a lot of entertaining parts. But to there's a certain part in me that finds this book a bit too annoying, dark, and also uh, mean spirited at times. And I don't know. Overall, it's an okay read. That's what I say. Overall, it's an okay read. If you can get all of him at the same time, keep at it. Yeah. But anywho, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Well, I think it's a return to pony life as we see what what all are they up to now. What craziness lies in store. So, we will be doing My Little Pony, Pony Life, episode 6, Pinkie Pie, Hyper Helper, part 1 and part 2. Ah, the conclusion to her uh, reality show competition. Ooh, that fast, really? Six episodes in? Six episodes. They go for mini arcs. Oh, all right. Makes sense. All right. So that will be next week's deal. So anyway, if you guys at home have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanso. Silver, where can the good people find you? Or oh, lots of places. On Twitter and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. On Kofi and Patreon, do a search for Silver Quill, and you can support my videos, uh, comics, and essays. Uh, do a search for Silver Quill or After the Fact on YouTube, and ye shall find me. And on Wednesdays, when there's a new comic, you can find me publishing a review on EquestriDaily.com. Awesome. Go check it out, guys. His work is always fun to read. So anyway, also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, don't... <laughs> Uh, don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and stitch radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on ponyvalive.com. Links will be in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast, exclusive uh, and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Knight, Jeffrey, Tristan and also my son back. Thank you so much guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been a sleepy Norman Sanzo. I am the ca- caffeinated silver quail. And we will guys see you next week with a, another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios.
So that was chaotic. Uh, as it should be, but not malicious. Yeah, true that, true that, true that. Oh, what? Ah, you, Norman, you were so close. <laughs> You've almost gone through the whole thing. <laughs> oh, bitterness. <laughs>